Now we are going to describe the anterior aspect of the skull of Norma frontalis. This anterior aspect shows the forehead, the orbits, the external nasal aperture, and the upper and lower jaws. This is the forehead. It presents the superciliary arches, which are more prominent in the male than in the female. The frontal bone articulates with the nasal bones at the nasofrontal suture, which meets the suture between the two nasal bones at a point called nasion. The area just above the nasion is called glabella. In the child, the frontal bone is formed of two halves that articulate together in the median plane. The two halves fuse together by about the eighth year after birth with disappearance of the intervening suture. But in some cases, this suture may persist in the adult and is called metopic suture. This is the orbit. It is pyramidal in shape, having a base that opens on the face, and an apex which opens into the cranial cavity. The base of the orbit has four margins, the superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. This is the superior orbital margin. It is formed wholly by the frontal bone. It shows in its medial part the supraorbital notch and the foramen, which transmits the supraorbital nerve and vessels. Just medial to the supraorbital notch, there is the supratrochlear notch which transmits the supratrochlear nerve and vessels. This is the inferior orbital margin. It is formed by the maxilla medially and the zygomatic bone laterally. One centimeter below the middle of the, of the border lies the infraorbital foramen, which transmits the infraorbital nerve and vessels. This is the medial orbital margin. It is formed by the frontal process of the maxilla and the maxillary process of the frontal bone. Just behind it, you find the lacrimal fossa, which is formed partially by the lacrimal bone. The lacrimal fossa lodges the lacrimal sac, which opens into the nasal cavity by the nasolacrimal duct. This is the lateral orbital margin. It is formed by the zygomatic process of the frontal bone and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. The cavity of the orbit has a roof, floor, medial wall, and lateral wall. The roof is formed by the orbital plate of the frontal bone anteriorly, and the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone in its most posterior part. The fossa for the lacrimal gland lies at the anterolateral angle of the roof. The floor is formed mainly by the maxilla in addition to the zygomatic bone and the palatine bone. It presents the infraorbital groove and the canal which transmit the infraorbital nerve and artery. The medial wall is the thinnest wall of the orbit and is formed mainly by the ethmoid and the lacrimal bones 
in addition to some contribution from the frontal and sphenoid bones. The lateral wall is demarcated posteriorly by the superior orbital fissure. And the inferior orbital fissure lies below. The superior orbital fissure communicates the orbit with the middle cranial fossa and transmits the ophthalmic veins and the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerves, in addition to the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. The optic canal is just medial to the superior fissure and transmits the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. The inferior orbital fissure communicates the orbit with both the infratemporal fossa and the terigo palatine fossa. It transmits the continuation of the maxillary nerve, which is called the infraorbital nerve, and the branch from the maxillary artery called the infraorbital artery. This is the zygomatic bone. It articulates with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone to form the zygomatic arch, which lies in the lateral aspect of the skull. This is the maxilla. It encloses the maxillary air sinus and forms the upper jaw. It, its process which carries the teeth is called the alveolar process and its uh, process which forms part of the hard palate is called the palatine process. The growth of the maxilla is responsible to a large extent for the elongation of the face which is especially marked between the age of 6 and 12 years. This is the external nasal aperture. It is bounded by the two nasal bones above and by the two maxillae from the sides and below. This is the anterior nasal spine, which projects forward from the lower border of the, of the aperture in the median plane. 